an interesting story. The uh, we had a hard time getting two aircraft to work at the same time because we had four or five airplanes available, mm-hmm. but they just could they didn't have them working right. All kinds of maintenance problems. Yeah, not our maintainer maintenance issues. And the very first day that I had two jets together that were able to fly and work, we had F-15s from Langley uh, next door and um, uh, over at Nellis, and we were going to meet them in the airspace when we could get aircraft up to fly. And myself and one other guy, Banger Newton, uh, were at the uh, faci- at the test facility. Everybody else was gone doing something, whatever. The two of us were there, they came in, they were like, hey, we got two airplanes, they're working. Do you guys want to fly? <laughs> we're like, yeah. So let's go. Let's see if we can make it work. So Banger and I hop in the jets, and everything works, and we call the Langley guys, get them to come out the airspace. It all is going to set up. So we fly, the two of us. And granted, this is we've done lots of simulator stuff and all this, you know, all the promises, but everybody's still like, yeah, is this stealth thing really going to work the way they say it is, you know, et cetera? And we're going against F-15, so now it's no longer simulator. It's real. And this is the first time this has ever happened in history. We take off. We get out to the airspace. we got tankers on both sides. we got four operational F-15s from Langley and the two of us, and we're going to try this out, try our tactics, you know, do whatever, see how it works. So we set up the uh, battles, and we do, I don't know how many, five, six, seven, eight intercepts by the end of the day. Every time, we just run right at them, go high, we go lower, we offset, we do whatever. Every time we shot them, killed them all, wow. never saw us, rolled behind them wow. every single time. First, first time or two, they're like, where are you guys at? And we're like, we're a mile behind you. They're like, what? And they do, what you guys? <laughs> it's like, we're like, holy mackerel. We came back, wrote our test reports. So like, I have seen the future. I'm like, this is not, it is not fake. This stuff flipping works. Um, these are operational combat pilots. There were some uh, combat experience pilots. I mean, these are, there's nothing fake about this. This is the real deal. Yeah. And uh, we wrote that up and everybody was like, oh my gosh, you got to be kidding me. So it was really cool. And then we flew like, one or two more times because the jets were still working. They kept doing stuff, but wow. um, it was the first time we'd ever seen that. I had all these uh, tests or these folks that had been working on the jet their whole career had come up, and one of them was crying. He was like, "You just validated my whole life's work." I mean, it was really awesome you know, to That's see. Awesome. Uh, but it was the first time that we had had a chance to see it do its thing. Mm-hmm. And then we, st- of course, we started testing against F-16s, other F-15s. We had special test things come out. I mean, we just did a lot of really cool stuff. And after a while, you know, people were like. Okay, this is uh, this is no longer a joke. This thing is not just theory anymore. This is real, and oh, by the way, it works. And then yeah. part of the test was four ships, where we launched, I, I believe, ten missions. If I remember right, of four ships, I could have that wrong. Four uh, B up to like twelve plus F 15s or F 16s or mix, you know, whatever, to do these tactics. And I remember us coming up with some things that was getting so ridiculous that the F 16 guys over there, Nellis, would be like, "Are you guys actually flying in the airspace? Or are you just calling us dead in the radio?" <laughs> it's kind of true because they never. <laughs> yeah. And I remember one of my favorite 4B-12, I believe it was, and I'm pretty sure it was F-15s on the Nellis Ranges. Um, we said, hey, let's see how fast we can kill them all, you know, just like being cocky, arrogant, yeah. right? So right to, you know, right to Mach 2, right high altitude, just fast as we could go, just just ran them down. And I believe from 80 miles apart or something like that, um, it took us like two minutes and 22 seconds or something to kill all 12 of them. And they no never way. saw us took shot. And you're like, you got to be flipping kidding me. I remember once a two ship had peeled off and was trying to run away. Then I'm at high altitude fast and they're running away at Mach 1. And I've got, I got like Mach 1 a closure, you know, like <laughs> running them down. I mean, that kind of stuff with the airplane, you're like, yeah. this thing is unbelievable. So uh, we learned a lot and uh, we were pretty surprised on some of the, uh, just how well the aircraft actually did. And like I said, because, you know, the basic airframe the engines, all that stuff is, it's, it's a, thoroughbred all by itself but when you add the sensors working correctly and that the jets are talking to each other and sharing data and and the whole package comes together with tactics it's you know nothing is perfect but it's nearly untouchable when it's done right um you know and and it's even you know it's got that same kind of capability against ground threats i mean you can kind of mess with them too and see and not see stuff so it's a very capable aircraft across the board um, and that stealth matters. I mean, that's a big deal, right? You know, because I mean, you got like the super horn. They go, it's stealthy. I'm like, not really, because when you no. hang all the weapons off, yeah. it's stealth anymore. Any stuff hanging on the outside really isn't stealthy. There's serious numbers you have to get to, um, and you know, aircraft really need to be clean uh, to be stealthy. You know, and most aircraft, if you're not putting it all internal, you're not clean. Mm-hmm. So, um, and you know, big powerful radars like you know the SAMs and stuff you know it doesn't you know they've got a lot of energy and they can see you when you got stuff hanging on your airplane so mm-hmm. um you know people tell you that well you know our our Raphael or our uh, you know our Super Hornet you know they're really stealthy not really not mm-hmm. in the not in the classic sense um so yeah uh, cause that's that's a lot of story again a lot of me talking on it but that's how luckily I ended up in the F-22 and 
got to do some really cool testing and uh, got a chance to go to Langley and stand up that operation and got a really weird phone call to go up to Elmendorf to stand up that operation. And um, after three standups in the F-22 and 20 years in the Air Force and flying and all the stuff I got to do, I said, you know, hey, it's really awesome. Love it. But now it's the Pentagon and staff and all kinds of other silly stuff that doesn't have anything to do with the mission of flying anymore. And that's what I love to do. And we just decided to, we were back in Alaska for the second time. We're going to, we're going to park it. So parked it, got out, fly for FedEx and my little mall, zipping around, bush flying and having fun. That's my, that's my fighter flying now. It's my little mall airplane. But um, it was, it was a heck of a career, Mike. I can't lie. I, mean, I got to do some really cool stuff, meet some fantastic people, um, you know, lifelong friends and uh, things that I could have never imagined, you know, 30 years ago that I would have a chance to do and things I got to see. It's incredible. Yeah, because I know t- uh, time's tight for you, Dozer. So I'm just going to quickly ask you: What were, uh, you, you became the demo pilot in 2005 and 2006? Can you tell us about this? Yeah, that's uh, you know I, they say the demo pilot and Max Mogo always gets mad because he was the real first demo pilot. Uh-huh. So he gave me grief all. Um, I I helped create the demo in 2005 when I showed up at Langley. There was only two of us qualified to fly the airplane: myself and uh, Corky. And um, uh, so. At the time, you know, the aircraft was still struggling on how many we were going to buy and, and the money and how much it cost. And, you know, of course, Air Force only. There was no support from the Navy, the Marines or anybody else, you know, like the F-35. It's got all these other people that yeah. want it. So they were struggling, um, you know, politically with the aircraft. And so the commander of Air Combat Command, he looked me up first. He's like, hey, Dozer. He's like, you're going to stand at the I'm like, say what? He's like, you're going to stand at the dentist. I'm like, oh, come on. I'm like, I'm busy. I'm like, I got like three jobs. And. And, I'm, I, and he's like, you're going to do it. I'm like, oh, yes, sir. So um, there was no demo uh, support group set up or anything yet. And so we didn't have the full profile. Uh, and it was kind of fun in one way because I didn't have all the oversight. I could kind of do what I wanted. So I would do like my little mini, you know, goof off behind the show lines or up at high altitude because nobody really knew what to do with me. Um, we did the the heritage flights, you know, with the old warbirds yeah. we fly in formation to cool got to fly in a mustang and a t6 and some other cool old uh, warbirds that was really a lot of fun um but the honest part of that what it was really for was to showcase the aircraft and get it in front of the public and give me a chance to talk on the radio and tv and you know newspaper you know interviews whatever in front of folks at the air show and go well let me tell you about your f-22 because people were not hearing anything except how much it cost and, and the downside they weren't hearing the stories like I just told you, let me tell you what this thing can do. Yeah. And also people can do that. I'm like, yeah, you have no idea. This is on our side. I'm like, we need this. I try to tell people like, this is like two football teams playing. <laughs> and one of the football teams is visible. It wipes out the field. I mean, it's not, you know, F-86 to F-5, F-4 to F-15. It kind of, a, you know, just continues with evolution. I'm like, no, this is revolution. This takes all that Finally. stuff and wipes it off. It's over again. It's that big of a change. And so the demo that that's that, that thing that happened in 2005 and six was more about me getting out in front of the public and having a chance to showcase the aircraft and tell the story as much as it was about the demo. Now, a lot of the maneuvers and other stuff, you know, I helped vet those and run through them and I did a lot of them and practiced them and, and all that kind of stuff. So kind of helped. So yeah, I, I kind of stood it up. Um, but you know, again, if I see Max, he'll yell at me if I say that I was the first demo pilot, cause like I said, he gets mad because yeah. he was the first that went and did the full demo thing in front of everybody. I just kind of did it on my own, you know, you yeah. behind the show liner you know, whatever. So just kind of showing people things. So, um, a matter of fact, once I remember it now, I, I popped into the clouds at one point, you know, and it was kind of one of those things I just did to, to depart, leave him, you know, like kind of thing. And I remember the air show guy was looking at the FA guy. Or something. he's like, hey, can he do that? He's like, I don't know. He's F 22. I guess he can do it. You know, it wasn't on purpose, but it was funny because guys, nobody really knew how to treat me in the yeah. F 22. It was this airplane and everybody's like, well, he sees everything and he knows everything in that jet, you know, because it's kind of funny. So it was a really interesting time. I enjoyed doing the air shows and talking to people. I was way too busy to do that job. Um, but uh, it was cool to get it in front of the public and try to explain to them just just what mm-hmm. just what America had on its hands, because mm-hmm. a lot of people, maybe even today, really don't still understand just how capable that jet is. And I wish, unfortunately, it did not work. I wish we had bought more because we need several hundred more than we have to do the mission that we're being asked to do. We don't have nearly enough aircraft, unfortunately. So. Yeah.